Planet Earth is infinitely complex, infinitely diverse, infinitely dynamic and beautiful. It is also fragile and under constant attack. But just as humans can destroy nature, we can also protect it. We can use our talents to restore, rebuild, and regenerate. It's a choice each of us must make. Will we become defenders of the Earth? The Earth is waiting for us to wake up and heed her call. Let's answer it. The time is now. Welcome to the 2022 Goldman Environmental Prize.
Hi, I'm Jane Fonda, and I am thrilled to welcome you to the 2022 Goldman Environmental Prize Ceremony. Tonight, as the global pandemic continues, we're coming together virtually to honor seven environmental defenders who've shown us what it takes to protect our fragile planet. These seven individuals were not chosen at random, but are among those courageous leaders guiding us toward a positive and healthy future. The fate of generations to come now rests on us. Will we demand that our governments honor their commitments to the climate? Will we push corporations to shift to policies of restoration and regeneration rather than plundering and greed? Will we alter our habits of consumption and demand sustainability for our food and material goods? Yeah, <laughs> it is a lot of work. But that work is well underway, and these prize winners have helped build the roadmap to victory. Let us follow their lead and continue the momentum they have started. We are a global community of people who care about our planet, and together, we're unstoppable. The time is now. The Goldman Environmental Prize was founded in 1989 by Richard and Rhoda Goldman as a way to honor unsung grassroots heroes of the environment and inspire the rest of us to take action. Tonight, in addition to meeting these seven people at the front lines of environmental change, we have the great honor of hearing from Dr. Jane Goodall, who has dedicated her life to studying, understanding, and protecting wildlife and the connectivity between humans, animals, and their environments. We will also hear performances from the wonderful Detroit Youth Choir and the phenomenal Angelique Kijo. And now I am delighted to introduce Richard and Rhoda's granddaughter, Jennifer Goldman Wallace, who serves on the board of the Goldman Environmental Foundation. Thank you, Jane. On behalf of my Uncle John, Aunt Susie, and the entire Goldman family, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. The Goldman Prize was started by my grandparents the year I was born. Two generations later, I am humbled to be continuing their legacy of honoring grassroots environmentalists from all over the world. When the prize was created over three decades ago, scientists began warning about the risks associated with climate change. They predicted a dire future, which at the time seemed so very far away. That future is now. For too long, climate change has taken a backseat to other seemingly more urgent crises. We no longer have that luxury. While the many challenges before us feel daunting, tonight we have reason to celebrate. In fact, we have seven reasons. Our inspiring prize winners. Each winner has accomplished something remarkable for nature, for their communities, and for all of humanity. Fortunately, nature has the amazing capability to regenerate, if given the opportunity. Tonight, our role is not to observe and feel satisfied by the accomplishments of these environmental heroes. Rather, we should feel inspired to channel their victories into regenerating our own spirit and act to protect our planet for future generations. As a new mom, I worry deeply about the world my children will inherit. These seven remarkable individuals remind me of what each of us can accomplish in the face of adversity. To each of them, I say thank you. To everyone else, let's get going. Good evening, I'm Sigourney Weaver, and I'm honored to introduce you to the winners of the 2022 Goldman Environmental Prize. Australia is a major producer and exporter of coal, which is the single largest contributor to climate change. Here, the impacts of climate change are profound and undeniable. Heat waves, droughts, megafires, and intense floods have ravaged urban and wilderness areas in recent years. 
and the Great Barrier Reef is acutely threatened by rising seawater temperatures and ocean acidification. The vast majority of people, in Australia at least, are very concerned about climate change, want more to be done about it, and would like their own employer to be doing a better job of managing the risk. The Australian coal industry has traditionally relied on funding from four major banks to operate. Julian Vincent saw the power that financial institutions have in driving coal production and started thinking about ways to intervene. In Australia, we have the big four banks are well-known, ANZ, Combank, NAB, uh, Westpac. Banks are about making money and being socially acceptable. And so our job is putting that information out to the world so people could see how their bank, the custodian of their money, was using it to finance coal and gas projects. That's really where the kernel of the idea for market forces came about. Julian founded Market Forces in 2013 to use grassroots organizing to put pressure on banks and insurance companies that enable coal production. Good afternoon. I should also Julian also worked directly with executives and shareholders of financial institutions and empowered bank employees to stand up and demand change. We will use this project to shift finance and investment and drive money away from dirty fossil fuels and into clean renewable energy if we need to. You can say to someone, hey, your pension fund is invested in fossil fuels, that means you're invested in fossil fuels. You can tell them you don't want them to invest in fossil fuels and you can move your money elsewhere. Today around Australia about- Market forces led a series of divestment days where people across the country gathered at their local bank branches to close their accounts and destroy their bank cards. In the city, you've got a lot of people who also care about the issues that we work on, and they are overwhelmingly concerned about protecting the environment and avoiding runaway climate change. Our job is to reach out to these people and engage them and, and really tap into their sense of power and agency. The Market Forces campaign was a success. Eventually, Australia's four largest banks and three major insurance companies committed to cease their investment in coal projects by 2030. It would have been unthinkable in 2012 to get to that point. When we first started with the banks, we're still more than willing to fund coal projects. There's, there's no policy, no clear directive to avoid coal. Now you have all of the big four banks committed to being out of thermal coal by 2030. It feels a world of difference from where we were 10 years ago. Julian's activism has transformed the landscape of coal investment in Australia and created a drought of capital for new projects. Today, Julian is working to change the global picture of fossil fuel reliance by targeting financial institutions across the world. If we want to build powerful and effective and successful movements, we need to show everyone how they can be agents of change and we need them to take as much action as possible. For outstanding environmental achievement for islands and island nations, the 2022 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Julian Vincent, Melbourne, Australia. My name's Julian Vincent and I live here in Melbourne, Australia. The traditional owners of these lands are the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I want to pay my respect to their elders, past, present and emerging, and acknowledge that the sovereignty of these lands was never ceded. I want to thank the Goldman Environmental Prize for the incredible honour of receiving this award. I'm fortunate to live and work with some of the most dedicated, passionate, intelligent, caring people I could hope to meet. I want to thank them for all we've been able to achieve so far and believe this award is the result of so many people taking action to hold financial institutions accountable for the environmental impacts of their investments. If we're to get global warming under control, there is no room to expand the scale of the fossil fuel industry, be it coal, oil or gas. Yet there are companies around the world attempting to do just that, and they need finance to deliver their destructive plans. The good news is that we have power over those sources of finance. It might be the agency of a government you're a citizen of, or a pension fund that manages your retirement savings, or a bank you have a deposit or a loan with. I would urge everyone watching this video to look into how the custodians of your money are using it to either the benefit or the detriment of the environment 
and use your power to change how these institutions behave. It's worked before and it will work again. This pale blue dot that we live on is all we have and there will be no let up in the fight to get global warming under control and preserve a safe, healthy planet for all people to enjoy. The ancestral territory of the indigenous Kofan people lies at the headwaters of the Aguarico River in one of the most biodiverse rainforests in the Amazon. The river is the region's main watershed, providing fresh water to tens of thousands of people. We have lived here for thousands of years. Our territory is a legacy left to us by our ancestors, where we can live free. Our territory feeds us and nourishes us spiritually. It gives us everything we need to live. But in 2017, the Kofan discovered a major threat to their homeland. Mining encampments and heavy machinery destroying the forest and contaminating the Aguarico River. In a modern-day gold rush, the Ecuadorian government had issued 20 large-scale mining concessions, with 32 more pending. The Kofan people were never consulted. We were angry. Angry that these foreign companies were plundering the environment. And in the end, we are left with the pollution and the destruction of our territories. Alexandra Narvaez and Alex Lusitante, two young Kofan leaders, were determined to protect their territory. They collaborated with numerous international NGOs and rallied downriver communities to join the fight. Building on this momentum, the Kofan sued the government for illegally granting the concessions without their consent and for violating the rights of nature as recognized in the Ecuadorian constitution. Alex comes from a family of traditional healers. We have always maintained the principle that our territory cannot be sold or negotiated. Our territory is sacred. Alexandra is one of the founders of La Guardia, Sinangoe's indigenous forest patrol that monitors Kofan territory for illegal mining, logging and poaching. I was the first woman guard. I said, I must do this for all women, for our territory, and for my daughters. Using 21st century technology, the forest patrols began documenting illegal mining. They flew drones over inaccessible areas, placed camera traps along remote trails, and used GPS to map threats to their land and rivers. Technology was crucial because it helped us to tell the judge that we were not lying because we had photos and videos. Meanwhile, Alex engaged the broader Kofan nation and focused on the legal and media strategies. We also sought support at the international level. We knew that the more visible we were, the greater the pressure. Armed with evidence, the community filed a lawsuit against Ecuador's government. In July 2018, the provincial court agreed that the Kofan's rights had been violated and nullified the 52 mining concessions. Three months later, after a government appeal, the court again ruled against the state. This historic decision 
close the door on mining in and around Kofan territory, protecting the headwaters of the Agua Rico River and 79,000 acres of pristine rainforest. Se garantizan la pervivencia física y cultural de nuestro pueblo. ¿Sí o no, compañeros? Sí. All indigenous people and nationalities won. So this represents a historic moment for all. For outstanding environmental achievement for South and Central America, the 2022 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Alexandra Narvaez and Alex Lusitante, Sinangoe, Ecuador. Mi nombre es Alexandra Narváez, soy de la nacionalidad Cofán, vivo en la comunidad Sinangüe. Mi nombre es Alex Lucitante, soy Cofán y, y vivo en la comunidad ancestral Cofán Avía. A nombre de la comunidad, de la lucha de todos y de todas, recibimos este gran premio Goldman con, gra con gran humildad, aprecio de todos y de todas quienes hemos venido luchando en defensa de la vida. Este trabajo es un trabajo colectivo de la comunidad que hemos venido en defensa de la vida, de los ríos, de la selva, de la cultura. Yo seguiré trabajando junto a mi nacionalidad para garantizar el cuidado de mi territorio porque es lo único que garantiza el futuro de nuestros hijos, el futuro de mis hijas. Nuestro territorio es la herencia de nuestros antepasados y es aquí donde realmente podemos vivir libres y de manera autónoma. Nos alimenta física y espiritualmente y nos da vida y es por este espacio que lucharemos por siempre. La Corte Constitucional del Ecuador nos ha dado la razón asegurando nuestro derecho a la consulta y consentimiento frente a actividades extractivas que ponen en riesgo nuestras vidas. Hoy, nosotros decidimos sobre nuestros territorios. Es una lucha histórica para todos los pueblos y nacionalidades indígenas del Ecuador y del mundo. Este reconocimiento de, de, de Goldman queremos que sea una luz para todo el mundo, que se unan a apoyarnos por la vida y por la tierra. Hearing the stories of Julian, Alex, and Alexandra, you know, I'm reminded that from our places of relative comfort and wealth, we are often not privy to the challenges experienced on the front lines of environmental destruction. Our role is to listen well and act accordingly and fast. And now I am thrilled to introduce you to an extraordinary group of talented young people, the Detroit Youth Choir, led by Mr. Anthony White, offers Detroit youths a world-class performing arts experience that develops their creative skills and talents. You might know them from their golden buzzer moment on America's Got Talent, where they perform to standing ovations. Please welcome the Detroit Youth Choir. your mind to do whatever you want to do just tell yourself that you're capable too but don't do things that ain't even cool and get rid of them no good friends that's enabling you 
Making you feel like you won't be nothing. Your life crumbling, they talk mumbling. You gon' be something. You are glorious. We're no games but warriors. We well known notorious. They can't stop you or block you or mock you. They mad cause you bad or they not you. You fall down but get up and skip and hop through. Kick down doors for others to walk through. You have a purpose to make you say, did I do that? Urkel. Now we call the reality virtue. This is who I am. This is me. Don't let the words hurt you. Nigeria's 27,000-square-mile Niger Delta is Africa's largest wetland. Communities here once thrived in this fertile ecosystem. But the Delta has become Africa's most exploited oil reserve. Decades of poor regulation and substandard infrastructure have resulted in over 240,000 barrels of oil spilled here annually. You can see destroyed land, the inhabitants of Niger Delta, what they live with is the destruction that is caused by the global oil industry. Chima Williams, a lawyer from Benin City, has been fighting for environmental protection in Nigeria for nearly 30 years. When two massive oil spills devastated the villages of Goy and Aruma in the mid-2000s, 
Chima was called to action. What happened was a spill that destroyed vast hectares of land, polluted the waters. We had a big battle in our hands. The ruptured pipelines belong to a subsidiary of Royal Dutch Shell, the world's largest multinational energy company. It blamed the spills on armed gangs, but community members claimed otherwise. So Chima and his team traveled to the Niger Delta to investigate. You can see the oil yes. uh, sheen on the water. I did the evidence gathering, interviews, and as a legal team, we agreed that we had a good case. Chima and his team found that the ruptured pipelines were aged and deteriorated. The fault was clearly on Shell, but previous attempts to hold the company accountable in Nigeria had failed. In a bold move, Chima and his international legal team took the case to Shell's home country, the Netherlands. But Shell claimed it had no responsibility for the actions of its Nigerian subsidiary. We had the first shocker we lost. The court disagreed with us. It was a significant setback, but Chima pushed forward, filing an appeal and digging deeper into the case. In 2014, Chima discovered that Shell had purposefully withheld information related to the cause of the oil spills. This became a turning point because in law, once you hide evidence, the court will interpret it to mean that such evidence is against you. The court agreed with us and upturned the decision of the lower courts. Chima and his team spent another seven years in litigation until finally, in 2021, the Dutch court ruled that Shell ultimately has responsibility over its Nigerian subsidiary. Shell was held liable for the oil spills in Goy and Aruma and ordered to compensate the affected residents. Yes. I felt highly elated and grateful to God. Our belief and faith in the use of the law was not misplaced. This is the first time that Shell has been held accountable in Dutch court. We will recover the Niger Delta to become what it used to be a heaven of peace, where environment is the foundation of life. For outstanding environmental achievement for Africa, the 2022 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Chima Williams, Niger Delta, Nigeria. My name is Chima Williams. I live in Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria. I want to thank you all for recognizing our work using litigation to change the narrative in environmental practices in our communities as a result of extractive industry operations. We want to call on the global uh, audience that are listening to us to identify men and women of goodwill, men and women that abhor injustice, men and women that are committed to changing things in this world, to join our campaign for environmental justice. After all, the environment is our life, and the environment is one that can change everything. It is a healthy environment that breeds healthy people, and healthy people brings about a healthy citizenry, and healthy citizenry brings about healthy nations. And it is only healthy nations that can make a healthy world. The what choice is ours to make, where to join. Thank you very much.
with its iconic windmills, tulip fields, and dedicated bicycle culture, many mistakenly think the Netherlands has a low carbon footprint. So we are extremely fossil fuel oriented. If you look at the emissions per person, we emit five times as much as someone living in India. As signatories of the Climate Change Convention, the Netherlands had agreed to reduce its CO2 emissions between 20 and 40 percent by 2020. And yet the government was doing little to meet its commitment. In the meantime, you see the big fires in Australia, in America. I'm all the time thinking, why don't we act? It's here already. Fed up with her government's inaction, Marianne Menesma founded Urgenda, a nonprofit dedicated to creating innovative solutions to climate change. Together, they filed a lawsuit against the Dutch government in 2012, taking a novel legal approach based on the nation's duty of care for its citizens. What is this duty? Well, you have signed the Climate Change Convention. You have said that it's very dangerous, climate change. And if you now are not acting on that, and you have acknowledged that it's so dangerous, then this is unlawful. To add heft to her lawsuit, Marianne created what she called crowd pleading, a hybrid of crowdfunding and citizen science. So we asked everybody in the Netherlands, if you see any argument that we can use from another court case all over the world, tell us. And if you want to be a co-plaintiff, please join us. But we want to go to court with as many people as possible. Ultimately, 886 co-plaintiffs joined the case. So the judges all the time were not watching a few lawyers, they were also watching hundreds of people that were like, please help us. And I think that makes a difference. Marianne also worked nonstop, traveling the country to gain support from the public and the press. Not surprisingly, there was a major skepticism that they could win. Even friends that said, nicely done, Marianne, but not going to work. And we said, this is not the PR stand. We believe we can win. In 2015, the Hague's district court ruled in Urgenda's favor, a verdict that was upheld by the Court of Appeals in 2018. And I think that they really did not expect us to win. And even after they appealed, they still thought this was a mistake of the first court. Next time we'll win. This can't be true, and so on. As the case headed to the Supreme Court, Marion worked with more than 800 Dutch NGOs and businesses to develop 54 concrete ideas, like subsidizing rooftop solar and implementing sustainable forest management that would allow the government to meet the 2020 deadline. So we went with all those measures to the government and said, we are prepared to do this. In December 2019, in a groundbreaking decision, the Supreme Court rejected the government's last appeal. That the cassatieberoep of the state must be overwhelmed. Urgenda had won. Their case demonstrated that governments have a legal responsibility to protect their citizens from the dangers of climate change. Astronauts from Spaceship Earth. After seven years, finally we have won, and now they should act. The verdict has sparked similar court cases around the world. I want within 10 years an industry without emissions. I think what we have shown is that even if everybody says it's impossible, don't listen to all the negative people. Go for your own thing and keep hope. For outstanding environmental achievement for Europe, the 2022 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Marian Menesma, Amsterdam, the Netherlands. I would like to thank the Goldman Environmental Prize enormously for awarding the prize to me. I'm very grateful and it's a lot of inspiration to go on. When we started in 2012, with a court case against the Dutch government, everybody said it was impossible and that we would never win. And in 2019, we won for the third time at the Supreme Court. And now the Dutch government is forced to work on dangerous climate change. And they had to spend 35 
billion euros to prevent dangerous climate change. So if anybody ever says to you, it's not possible, don't believe them. If you believe it's right, go on and you'll be sure that you will win. We, you and I, can support Marianne and Chima by pushing those in power for change and making changes to our behavior at home. Namely, what we consume and where we put our money. Now is the time for this generation to act. And now I'm thrilled to introduce Dr. Jane Goodall, whose contributions to ecosystems and wildlife have no comparison. She is a powerful ally of animals and nature and to the Goldman Prize. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jane Goodall, and I'm really pleased to join you virtually in celebrating this year's Goldman Prize winners. They've done so much to protect our precious natural resources. They became aware of things that were wrong in their communities destruction of the environment, injustice, poverty, lack of understanding, and they determined to do their best to change things. They made plans and took action, and they overcame obstacles, and they succeeded. When I was studying chimpanzees in Tanzania, I learned not only about their behavior, but also about the magical forest ecosystem within which each little species of plant and animals as a role to play. When I began this work in 1960, the Gombe National Park, where the chimps live, was part of the great equatorial forest belt that stretched across Africa. But when I flew over the area in 1987, I saw that the park was by then just a small island of forest surrounded by bare hills. And then I realized that poverty was driving people to destroy the trees, to make some money from charcoal or timber, or to create more land for growing food. And then I knew I had to try to do something about it. Sometimes the problems we face seem overwhelming, but we can take inspiration from the fact that all over the world, people are waking up to the harm we've inflicted on planet Earth, our only home. More people understand that it's our disrespect of the environment and animals that has led, among other things, to climate change and the loss of biodiversity, and plunged so many into poverty. But the activists honored today are living proof that by taking action, inspiring and collaborating with others, and not giving up, it is possible to turn things around. The Goldman Prizes provide much needed recognition and support for these grassroots heroes. They and the countless others who are working with the same commitment are a major reason why we should have hope for the future. And let us all remember that each day we live, we as individuals make some impact on the planet and we can choose what impact we make. Together, we can make huge change, and we must before it's too late. So finally, huge congratulations to all of you Goldman Prize winners. Thank you. Niwat Roykow grew up along the richly biodiverse Mekong River, which courses through 3,000 miles of Asian countryside. For centuries, the river has provided a lifeline for 65 million people, most of them fishermen and farmers. I am a son of the Mekong. The Mekong itself is a source of food, a source of income. This is a place where we take baths, where we get water for home use. 
The river is also a playground and a learning space. It is a big part of my life. Niwat is known as Crew T, or teacher. He's been a lifelong educator in the schools of Chien Kong. Some years ago, the nature of his work took a different course when he learned of an imminent threat to his community. We heard about dams being built upstream, and we began to see changes. Before, there was no poverty along the Mekong River. We could fish to support ourselves. We planted many different crops in the rich soil. In the past, lots of fish, not just giant catfish, would swim up here to lay their eggs and spawn. The main cause for the loss of the fish catch has been the dams upriver. Kruti began to talk with his pupils' parents, who were struggling with their diminishing catch and crops. The discussion turned to protests against the dams, but a much larger issue was emerging. A massive river navigation and widening project between the Thai and Chinese governments that would destroy a 250-mile stretch of the Mekong. It would involve dredging and blasting with explosives to construct a deep navigation channel for 500-ton Chinese cargo ships which would devastate the Mekong's fisheries, ecosystems, and livelihoods. The real campaign was when we began work on the Mekong River Rapids blasting campaign, because it was happening right here in front of our homes. We fought and we organized our local communities. We spread information, we raised awareness in schools and Buddhist temples where our monks emphasized our spiritual connection to nature. We built a new movement, a new alliance. We spread the word to new groups, to a new generation. As Crew T raised awareness about the dangerous project, word came back to him that 120 miles of the river had already been blasted. <laughs> Crew T doubled down on his efforts and in response, the Thai government announced that it would cancel the project in February 2020. Even though we were very small and we seemed powerless, we believed in the right of local communities to protect our own resources. That gave us the strength and energy to do whatever we could to stop this destructive project. And people everywhere agreed because this is not just for the Mekong. This is for the world as a whole. For outstanding environmental achievement for Asia, the 2022 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Niwat Roykal, Chien Kong, Thailand. สวัสดีครับผมนิวัฒน์ร้อยแก้วกลุ่มรักเชียงของขณะนี้อยู่ที่ชายแดนแม่น้ำขงไทยลาวอำเภอเชียงของจังหวัดเชียงราย ขอขอบคุณรางวัลโกลแมนไพรส์ที่ได้มอบรางวัลให้กับพวกเราในการปกป้องรักษาแม่น้ำขงจากโครงการระเบิดเกาะแก่งแม่น้ำขงแม่น
The densely populated Los Angeles region is the largest urban oil field in the United States, producing millions of barrels each year. 21-year-old Nayeli Kobo has been fighting to end oil extraction since she was a child. Over 500,000 Angelinos live within a quarter of a mile to an active oil and gas well, and those emissions have been scientifically proven to damage our health and our environment. In 2004, Nayeli's family moved into a South Los Angeles apartment, neighboring an oil well operated by Allen Co. Energy. Toxic emissions permeated the neighborhood and began affecting Nayeli's health. My nosebleeds got so severe, I had to sleep in a chair to prevent choking on my own blood. I developed asthma. I had heart palpitations and horrible headaches. My mom developed asthma. My sister had headaches, stomach pains. So it was a really hard time. Speaking with her neighbors, Nayeli's mother, Monique, realized that the health issues were widespread. Residents began organizing, and at only nine years old, Nayeli became the spokesperson for People Not Pozos, a grassroots community group. I live in front of an oil well, and the oil well has been making me sick. Nayeli and her mother went door to door, distributing flyers and documenting illnesses. Speaking at rallies and government meetings, Nayeli garnered media coverage and political support that pressured Alan Coe to temporarily halt operations in 2013. I didn't need to use my inhaler three times a day. My nosebleeds went away. But then we were aware that we weren't the only community being affected by oil extraction. Wanting to address the disproportionate number of oil wells permitted in minority communities, Nayeli co-founded the South Central Youth Leadership Coalition. Everyone has the right to be a clean air no matter We sued the city of Los Angeles in 2015 for a violation of the California Environmental Quality Act and environmental racism, and we won. Hi everyone, my name is Nayeli Kobo. By the time she graduated high school, Nayeli had become a powerful advocate for environmental justice. But in 2019, her life was turned upside down with the diagnosis of a rare form of cancer. As soon as the doctor said, like, you have cancer, I immediately thought of the signs on Elenko's wall that says, dangerous chemicals known to cause cancer, birth defects, and reproductive harm. Nayeli spent the next two years undergoing intensive medical treatment. But the momentum of her efforts continued. In 2020, thanks to Nayeli and the community's years of tireless activism, the Allen Coast site was forced to permanently cease operations. This remarkable victory has Allen Co. executives facing over 24 criminal charges for environmental health and safety violations. When Allen Co. was permanently shut down, I remember feeling at peace in a way that I knew that nobody in my community was going to be breathing those toxic emissions anymore. That's historic. Nayeli's cancer went into remission, and her activism continues to affect change, most recently with a groundbreaking city council vote to ban new oil wells and phase out existing ones. For outstanding environmental achievement for North America, the 2022 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Nayeli Kobo, Los Angeles, USA. My name is Nayeli Kobo, and I live in Los Angeles, California, United States. First, I would like to thank Goldman for this award. Thank you for giving me support and a family. Thank you for recognizing our work to end urban oil drilling in the city of Los Angeles. It is truly an honor to be this year's 2022 North American recipient. This award belongs to all frontline communities advocating day to day for their right to breathe clean air. The Ouroboros represents new beginnings, and I can think of no better time to receive this award. What formally began in January 2011 as a grassroots campaign in South Los Angeles, fighting the oil well next door, operating on land owned by the Archdiocese, ends in January 2022, with the city of Los Angeles voting unanimously to phase out oil and gas wells. We won't stop here. We need to ensure our elected officials act on this. 
I fight because I believe everyone has a right to breathe clean air despite age, gender, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, or zip code. I fight so no future generations has a childhood like mine. My call to action is we must hold politicians and the Roman Catholic Church accountable. They should not rest until every single child is guaranteed a livable future and clean air. Si se puede. Nayeli, Niwa, Chima, Marian, Julian, Alex, and Alexandra, they are all testimony to humankind's ability to build bridges, to protect and restore ecosystems, and to regenerate life. Let us speak their names with inspiration and energy in our hearts. But don't leave yet. <laughs> There's more to come from past recipients of the Goldman Prize. But first, Let's welcome the world-renowned Angelique Kijo. Ms. Kijo is a multiple Grammy Award winner. She, gosh, she travels the world advocating on behalf of children in her capacity as a UNICEF and Oxfam Goodwill Ambassador. And she created her own charitable foundation, Batonga, dedicated to supporting the education of young girls in Africa. We are so pleased to welcome Angeli Kijo. Don't ever let them hurt you in any way. Oh, never let them steal and take the best of you. Keep building cities from the ground. We rise and weave the wave. Mother Nature has a way of warning us. A time bomb set on a last countdown. Do you hear it? Will you stop it? Don't you listen? Amen, si amen, eva mi ale beneki, hey, amen. Amen, si amen, ke leg magia ero la nu silo. Each one of us, each one of us, we need each other. We need each other now. We need each other now. Each one of us, each one of us, we need each other. Don't ever let them hurt you in any way. Oh, never let them steal and take the best of you. Keep building cities from the ground. We rise and weave the wave. Mother Nature has a way of warning us. A time bomb set on a last countdown. Will you find it? Will you stop it? Won't you listen? Amen, si amen, eva mi ale bene hi hey, amen. Amen, si amen, ke leg magia ero la nu I know we are human, but why can we use the gift she's giving us? Mother Nature has a way of warning us. A time bomb set on a last countdown. Do you hear it? Will you find it? Won't you listen? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hello, my name is Jean Wiener. I am Chibizi Ezekiel. Marilyn Baptiste Setsere. Я сама на чоловік Клишовська у Северному Македонії. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Евгения Чирикова. Я экологический активист из России. For over two decades, myself, my friends, my colleagues have been working towards recovering the marine environment around our island. I am working with an organization called Groundwork, Friends of the Earth, South Africa, to change the future of South Africa to work towards a just transition. I am working towards promoting youth inclusion in the governance of our natural resources and environmental sector. I encourage each one of us every day to give thanks to water. I'm working to protect and manage coastal and marine resources. 
наша задача – помогать активистам, экологам из России распространять информацию об их важной активности. Stand up for the environment and human rights and never give up, irrespective of how big a challenge it may seem. Повеќе од 200 добитници на наградата ни докажа дека можеме да ја преобликуваме иднината на планетата. Your generation and generations to come are counting on you. On you. On you. On you. The time is now. Now is the time. The time is indeed now for each of us to act in defense of the earth. Please visit our website at goldmanprize.org and read more about these environmental champions. Read about their calls to action and how you can support them and share their stories on social media and act in your own communities to create change. Let us rebuild and regenerate together. Thank you so much to our special guests tonight, Dr. Jane Goodall, Angelique Kijo, and the Detroit Youth Choir. And thanks to all of you for joining us and for being a part of our community. Good night and stay safe. <laughs>